You say this will likely go ahead anyway, but what do the companies have to do in order to additionally satisfy the DOJ? Are there assets that can be sold off? Hi, Vani. Thanks for having me. I think the biggest issue with the DOJ certainly is more the consumer. Is this good for the consumer? So even if they were to do more concessions than they've already offered, which includes prepaid sales, fixed pricing and coverage in rural America, I think that it really, they've done a lot here. I think it ultimately comes down to convincing the DOJ that for the wireless consumer, this would be a good thing. I think price fixing there goes a long way to that. But um, I think that that's the case that they need to convince them of. Now, how long more will it take for the DOJ to get convinced? And will that in turn help with the cases the AGs have brought against this potential merger, Jennifer? I think the, you know, uh, T-Mobile did put out in what's called an 8K filing where they talked about getting closure, regulatory approvals by July 28th, I believe the day was. So that's a significant date because it would indicate to me that that's a net positive if this deal gets done because it's a very specific date where they have confidence instead of saying just second half of the year. Now, the states bring another question. I think the states' real kind of beef was on the prepay side and pricing. Both of those with recent concessions, and Sprint has amended and offered those concessions here. Jennifer, if the DOJ does decide to block this, how strong would the legal case be for Sprint and T-Mobile? Um, the fact that the FCC have said that they think it's okay must make a significant difference from a legal point of view. It, it, it doesn't. I mean, the DOJ certainly could bring the case. We saw that with AT&T and T-Mobile, of course. However, I think the biggest question has to be, um, it would be unprecedented if they kind of didn't align. In no communications merger have we had not the DOJ and the FCC be shoulder to shoulder here. So if they do deny it or block it, we're kind of in unprecedented territory in terms of, you know, new waters. What would Deutsche Telekom do with the assets if it was blocked? I think Deutsche Telekom, you know, maintains the course with T-Mobile. T-Mobile I'm not worried about in this situation. They're generating a ton of cash. They have certainly transformed the network. Um, they have been the leader in market share gains in the most eight, eight recent quarters. So I think for T-Mobile, the, the, on the to-do list is getting more spectrum. So that's what they would have to figure out. There's options there. Of course, C-Band becomes part of the conversation as well as Charlie Ergen and DISH. However, if it's Sprint doesn't get done, I think that's the bigger question. By Sprint's own admission, they're somewhat dead man walking on, from a financial point of view if this is blocked. So I think that is the bigger question is what does Masasan do? Just put, us, um, put it into a nutshell for us what exactly the DOJ is objecting to, Jennifer. I think the DOJ looks at it and says, listen, to be a wireless consumer in the last 10 years, or five, let's call it three years in the U.S., has not been a bad thing. We've seen a very deflationary pricing environment, really thanks to T-Mobile. I mean, I think a case could be made that neither AT&T nor Verizon would have offered unlimited service as they did in February of 2017, if not for the T-Mobile and maybe the lesser extent Sprint agitating the market that way. So I think from a consumer standpoint, they're very concerned about pricing staying competitive. However, to T-Mobile and Sprint's credit, you know, part of the concessions is they have promised um, not only 5G in rural America, but pricing continuing to be low. And that, that's, a big, that's a big promise, especially as they kind of balance that with the build out of 5G and the needs and capital with that. I mean, does the DOJ take into account the fact that in a scenario where it does block this, Sprint may not be able to survive and therefore the question of having four carriers as opposed to three sort of becomes moot because there isn't a fourth carrier eventually anyway? That's right. I think that's the question. I mean, I, Sprint has certainly tried to do a lot of Hail Marys for that playbook to get that message across. But again, Bonnie, the, the, the mantra of the DOJ really can't, they kind of have to put on blinders to that. It can't be if Sprint were to go bankrupt, then what happens? Um, you know, it really has to be is four good for the wireless co consumer or is three even better? And I think, you know, you can look at um, examples like the airplanes, you know, that airlines was that consolidation. Has that been good for consumers? You know, some would say probably not.